It's a section of New York City normally resounding to the sound of dribbling basketballs. But recently, the screams of he shoots, he scores have bounced off the Harlem Brownstones. Canada's game is providing young people there the chance to score goals and reach new ones as well. Tom Harrington of the CBC program Sports Journal has the story. We're supposed to be friends. We're Americans, man. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan yeah. Dry is a long way from home, and it's an unlikely place for a teenager from Harlem. He's won a special prize, a scholarship to attend the Sylvan Lake Hockey Camp near Red Deer, Alberta. Jonathan was flown here by the Ice Hockey in Harlem program. It's a reward for doing well in school. He's 14 and is going into grade 10. For Jonathan, the trip is a dream come true. It makes you feel like a real NHL player. The bus load and everything, traveling, and um, when you get off the bus, everybody's watching big hockey bags, hockey players, um, and you feel strong. Uh, yeah, I'm a hockey player now. Jonathan's room is typical of any kid who loves hockey, filled with medals, trophies, and pictures of his favorite players. And Jonathan dreams of making it into the NHL. Not what you'd expect from a kid in a neighborhood known for gang violence at a high dropout rate. But hockey is transforming the way inner city teens like Jonathan think about education and their future. Ice hockey in Harlem was created 16 years ago by a group of Canadians living in New York City. It provides kids with free ice time and hockey equipment with no charge to the parents. Students who do well in school get scholarships to a private high school or college. When I came into the program, like, if you didn't do well, you, can't, you couldn't play, and I really wanted to play, so I hit the books. Hey, go get it. Go get it. Jonathan plans to finish high school and go to college. Welcome news for his mother, Renee Dry, who's raising Jonathan and his little brother, Patrick, on her own. Whether he cho chooses to uh, pursue a hockey career or any type of career, he knows, like, first and foremost, school is number one. And um, hockey has um, shown him that. Well, if I didn't join the program, I would probably be, like, a kid in school, low marks, um, always getting into trouble, because I was like that a little before for the program. Well, Johnny being in the program has definitely made him more confident in himself. It's Sunday morning. Natasha Underwood and her mother Claire are regulars at the neighborhood church. Natasha is also on the hockey team. But she knew nothing at all about hockey until a trip to Canada when she was 10. A relative who was a real fanatic got her hooked on the game. He gave me a hockey stick, and he gave me a little hockey charm. And I went home. I was the only girl on the bus with a hockey stick. Everybody else had, like, Barbie dolls coming from Canada and everything. I'm the only one with a hockey stick. So, and after that, I just wanted to play with my hockey stick. How did I respond to Tasha's interest in hockey? I was flabbergasted. I was surprised. I was hockey. Who plays hockey? Now, Natasha is 16 and just as passionate about hockey as ever. She's been here every Tuesday night for the past six years, the only girl on her team. Hey, do y'all want to see boys going wild? Well? <laughs> going to college. They're going to miss me, right? Yeah. What college do you want to go to? I want to go to probably Florida or stay in New York. Florida's nice. I mean, I wouldn't want to stay in New York. I want to, I want to go to California, but it's too far. I'm on a section I'm going to take my plane ticket. <laughs> Me? I want to probably go to Boston College or Michigan State. Two good hockey teams over there. It's not just the sport they love, it's the equipment, too. At $700 U.S. per player, it's a luxury most of the families could not afford. The equipment makes you feel special. I mean, it's like, it's like having money. Like, you just want to go out and show it off. So it's something I would cherish forever. Like, if I stopped playing hockey, um, I wouldn't give it away. I would, like, put it in, like, a nice case and just store it. And, like, if I have a kid, I'd probably give it to him. You took your earrings off? I'll take my earrings off. It's the last practice of the season, and some of the parents are here to cheer on their kids. Post, 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 post. Name's Chris Valentine. Been coaching ice hockey in Harlem for four years. I've known most of these kids for about that that amount of time. Work in the uh, financial industry, and uh, I do this to uh, let off some steam and 
teach the game to uh, kids that normally wouldn't be exposed to it. You know, for a kid that might take the left ramp, it enables them to stay in the stay in the center lane. And uh, for the kids that are good kids, it just it gives them something to look forward to every every week. It feels amazing. It's extraordinary. Um, winning your face, it's a great feeling. It's like you're on top of a mountain, like it's so cold, but you really don't feel it because it's just you and goalie. You don't really think of all the other problems in your life. It's, uh, it, it sets you apart, you know? I mean, uh, uh, kids in this area, you know, they play basketball, they play baseball, they play football. But you know, rare is the kid in this area of the of the of the country or the city that that plays hockey, you know, and they love it. The friends or so-called friends I had would make fun of me when they found out that I played a white man's sport to them. I just ignored them every time they made fun of me, went about my business, and I've had a good time. Hockey changed me in like the sense of. I, I was natural. I was a really shy person. When Tosh is on the ice, she's no longer my daughter. She's no longer that quiet, introvert, young lady that you that we see. But she comes up and you know she body checks and then she hits the guys against the plexiglass. And I'm like, where did this person come from? You know. Once I step on the ice against another team, they don't know. They just see me as a girl and. They don't know how if I could play. They just assume that, oh, let me hit her and get it over with. So when I pop them, then it's a, you know, they were like, oh, and you know, it's kind of good. To glide on ice, it's like being in a car, like with the window down, wind in your face, like skates with the, the wind, like the, those two go together. Um, it's like Romeo and Juliet or something. Uh, they just like made for each other. Like once you like push off, the wind is there, and it feels great. The team is very important to me. They're they're like a second family to me. Don't move! Don't move! And don't move! Don't move! Come on, John. It's like if I need help or something, it's like I could talk to either a parent that's taking me there or m one of my teammates. I can. It's like somebody is. They always there for me. One person who knows that feeling is George Cepeda. He joined the ice hockey in Harlem program as a 10-year-old. Now, he's back as a volunteer. It's taught me how to be a team player, a leader. Now I come back to help the program out because they gave me so much, so all I can do is give back. And I enjoy it. You know, it's free ice, and I love the ice. George is 21 now. He's about to graduate with a liberal arts degree from LaGuardia Community College, thanks to a scholarship from the program. So, you know, my parents didn't get to go to college, and I'm getting to go and they're happy about it. Without this program, you know, I don't know where I'd be. I probably wouldn't be going to college. High school would have been it and then probably working somewhere, sweeping up McDonald's. Don't be the center high school. You be on the board. Watch what I do. It's a Saturday in July at the local rink in Sylvan Lake, Alberta. Dozens of kids from all over North America are at this summer hockey camp. Jonathan Dry of Harlem is one of them. To compete with, like, kids from different states, it's it's a good opportunity to learn more things. I mean, like, if you just stay in, like, one place and just keep practicing, you just keep doing the same things over and over. After a week of coaching and practicing, it's time to play. Jonathan's team, in red, gets off to a fast start. A quick 3-0 lead. Jonathan's team wins 9-1, and he scores one of the goals. The final score means a lot, but win or lose, just having this experience far from the streets of Harlem is victory enough. Competition is like, it's not like battle. It's just, a, it's like a, a journey. It's like competition. This is like just the beginning. Um, once you finish this, real things start to happen.